Hey guys, so I'm about to be in a completely different outfit for the majority of this video, but before we get into it, I wanted to ask you guys, I'm currently in the process of developing a channel membership as well as merch. Thanks, Beck. So yeah, I'd love to know what you guys would want to see, ideas that you guys have. Let me know and let's get into the rest of the video. Hi friends, it's Madison Harnish back in my blue kitchen for another crazy video. And if you enjoy deep dives and like to analyze scams and crazy things going on on the internet, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And well, let's get into the video. In 2019, Kylie Jenner was given the title of the world's youngest billionaire, only for it to come out this year that her and her mother created an elaborate scheme to trick Forbes and others into believing she was a billionaire when, when she, she wasn't. wasn't. Why did she feel the need to lie about her wealth when she's obviously already very wealthy? And what was the end goal? This is just one example of the many numerous times that the Kardashians have scammed the public. So let's analyze the Kardashian web of lies. Don't be rude. Are you kidding me? Now, first off, I want to put a disclaimer in this video. This video is not to needlessly bash the Kardashians. It's impressive, the things that they've accomplished. Don't get me wrong. But some of the ways that they make money are super shady. And I find it bizarre how blatant the Kardashians are about their scams, and yet they're able to successfully get away with them time and time again. I'd almost say it's an admirable feat, except for it's also extremely concerning. So first, I'll just briefly go over some scams that all all of the Kardashians have participated in. The Kardashian makeup line, aka Kardashian Beauty. It is crazy how hard it is to find information on this beauty line on the internet. For a second, I almost wondered if I made this up in my head because there's nothing on it. I specifically remember, and let me know in the comments if you remember this too, so that I know I'm not crazy. There was a Kardashian makeup line called Kardashian Beauty sold at Ulta. That was the crummiest makeup ever. I had friends that bought the makeup and they were so disappointed with it because it was just the worst makeup ever. And it was like the Kardashians just slapped their name on a really crummy makeup brand and tried to make like a quick buck from doing that. I will say the blendability, um, I use a beauty blender and beauty blender usually just, you know, blends out foundation flawlessly, but this is definitely one of those foundations you definitely have to kind of work into the skin. There's some hits and misses in this palette together. Um, I will say, uh, I would say maybe kind of skip this palette. Honestly, initial, like everything when I first got it, I swatched it on the back of my hand. I just wanted to see how it blended and, you know, I swatched this product and it comes off a little bit streaky, but when I blended it out, it just kind of blended out into nothing. It was, it was a major, a major flop. flop. And of course the Kardashians have done that with so many other things, perfumes, a lineup, Macy's, a clothing brand. There's been a lot of things that they have slapped their name on, but I would say Kardashian beauty was by far the worst of all of them. I actually didn't know about the Kardashian credit card until reading about it. They tried to open up a credit card. The Kardashian credit card was a prepaid card that they marketed specifically to children. They marketed a credit card to children. Why would you think that that's a good business idea or plan? Kardashians did actually once issue a co-branded credit card. That's card with a K. It was actually a prepaid debit card and was described by Forbes as one of the worst financial products ever introduced. The Kardashian card had a card purchase fee of either $59.95 or $99.95 and this would also cover the monthly fees for either 6 months or a year depending on which option you chose. Then you would be charged $7.95 per month and if you lost your card and needed a replacement, that's $9.95. It would charge you $1.50 to take your money out of an ATM and $1 to just check your balance in an ATM. 
and $6 to cancel the card and get the balance refunded. This credit card also had a ton of hidden fees and they shut it down a month after launching it, I assume from all the backlash. Of course, there's the numerous Kardashian weight loss products that they've marketed throughout their entire careers. And a lot of these are really shady, like Fit Tea, which has been proven not to work. It's literally just like a tea that flushes out. You know, it, it makes, it makes you, you know, you get what I mean. The weight loss lollipops that were appetite suppressant lollipops, which once again, having a majority of a younger audience to market constantly weight loss products to your young impressionable audience just feels really, really shady and gross and unethical to me personally. Instagram is already an extremely toxic place without constantly seeing weight loss scam companies promoted by celebrities with lots of people who look up to them. Also Instagram related and one of the weirdest scams that the Kardashians participate in are the fake Instagram giveaways that they routinely post onto their Instagram. These giveaways usually have a Kardashian member looking glamorous with some sort of luxury item or cash saying that all of that can belong to you if you enter their simple and easy giveaway. If you've ever seen those and wondered what they are, that's something I'm going to reveal today here in this video right now. The weirdest part about those posts is they're almost immediately deleted right after they were post and after a lot of people have entered the giveaway. Now, this can't be 100% confirmed, but according to an article written by Betches, just a funny name. There's a site called Curated Business that runs all of these giveaways. And basically how it works is aspiring influencers who want to pay for their followers will pay Kardashian members anything between 25,000 to 50,000 per person who wants to enter this giveaway just to have their username account posted as a part of the giveaway. Like, you know, when there's rules and it's like, follow these accounts to win this prize. They're one of those accounts. Each one of those accounts have paid something between 25,000 to 50,000 to the Kardashian member to join that giveaway. And it's basically like paying for your followers because the Kardashians promoted you and asked people to follow you for this giveaway. A ton of people follow you and all of a sudden you have a ton of new followers and it's like giving a giant boost to new influencers regardless of what kind of content they make. In a weird way, it's kind of like an influencer pyramid scheme with the Kardashians at the very top just laughing all the way to the bank. There's been a lot of other shady things the Kardashians have done and participated in, but we would be here for hours. Let's move on to talking about Kris Jenner and a really shady thing that she's participated in. So Kris Jenner is the mastermind momager behind the Kardashian empire that we know today. She's really behind everything happening in the Kardashian multiverse. <laughs> But Kris Jenner has participated in her very own scam. Kris Jenner became the face and chairman of the board for Legacy Business School. And if you don't know what Legacy Business School is, that would make sense because it's not a real business school. In fact, it's not an accredited college. So if you were to take courses at Legacy Business School, none of the classes would transfer and there, you wouldn't really have any real units. Legacy Business School is located in Trump Tower and tuition can cost up to $105,000 a year for, for a, a fake, fake business, business school. school. That's, That's not, not even an accredited, accredited college. college. The first 100 students of Legacy Business School get to have an exclusive dinner with Kris Jenner herself. So here's the lovely video that Kris Jenner made explaining why you should join Legacy Business School. Ambition is what drives us. Passion is what keeps us up at night. The impact we wanna make, now that's what guides us toward success. Your future is waiting. What is your legacy? I'm 
I love how short that is. Like, wow, that's really convinced me to pour $100,000 into this business school. But here's the shadiest part about this business school, covered really well by the Young Turks. Students, what they do is they target foreign students who don't know the education system in the U.S. And so they think that this is a legitimate college and they think they can transfer their units to a legitimate school, but that's not the case. But what they do is they tell students, hey, every year we have this gala and you get to sip champagne and wear a fancy dress or a suit and you get to rub shoulders with or elbows with all these wealthy people and it does lure students in and then they realize what the price tag is and they freak out and say hey i can't afford that and what the recruiters do is they contact the students and tell them oh don't worry we're going to give you a huge discount because you're such a great student we really want you to come in 65 percent discount you only have to pay $35,000, $40,000 a year, similar to what you'd pay at USC. And students think, okay, cool, and they'll start their education there, their education, and then the following year, they don't get that discount. So they'll try to transfer to a different school, and they're unable to do it because those credits mean nothing. That's not even credit, to be real with you. This school is actually the School of European Economics, just rebranded to avoid any sort of crackdown. They're a for-profit organization that has been sued a dozen times and are operating without legal approval. Today I'm going to jail. Your sister's going to jail. Have a little compassion. So this university is literally a huge scam that's putting people hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt for no good reason. And Kris Jenner became the face of that school. Kim Kardashian has also been a part of a lot of scams throughout the years, but let's just briefly go over some of her biggest scams. Now, whether or not this could be seen as a scam is kind of up to the individual interpreter, but Kim Kardashian is a huge participator in outrage marketing. Whether it's posting revealing photos that she know will get criticized, calling her brand kimono at first and then changing it later, Kim Kardashian very blatantly does stuff for outrage marketing to get people outraged talking about her and then she's able to subsequently promote her business and gain more fame and notoriety. It's really smart and brilliant, but it could also be seen as manipulating the public and the public's emotions for your own personal gain. Kim Kardashian also makes a ton of false claims. Of course, there's the Skechers shape ups that she promoted for a while that she claimed, you know, shaped your booty. Um, <laughs> And the FTC cracked down on that because it was 100% a false claim and Skechers themselves were sued. She makes claims about weight loss supplements all the time and was even sued for claims that she made about a hair removal product. Reports also surfaced saying that Kim was paid $20,000 to make undisclosed sponsored posts on Twitter. For example, she tweeted without disclosing that this was an ad. The Carl's Jr. chicken salad came out yesterday. I'm on my way to Carl's Jr. for lunch right now. Have you tried them yet? Like who talks that way? That's so obviously a sponsored post, but she tried to make it come across and seem like it's like a genuine thing that she was tweeting out. It's especially suspicious considering she'd worked with Carl's Jr. in the past before, so. And next, we absolutely have to talk about Poosh. Poosh is created by Kourtney Kardashian and it's a wellness, holistic website about living your best life. Now, if it sounds familiar to you, if that name or that idea for a website sounds familiar to you, it's for good reason. Poosh is literally the unoriginal, lazy copy of Goop, Gwyneth Paltrow's online health and wellness brand that she created that's notoriously known for ridiculous health claims and overall 
being very goopy. And Poosh is literally just the lazy copy of that. They even kept the two O's thing that Goop and Gwyneth Paltrow is so famously known for. Poosh is supposedly a nickname for her daughter, but it's kind of weird how similar it is to Goop. She literally took the scam that was Goop's website and, and scammed, scammed the, scam the scam website, website by, by creating, creating a copy, copy website. website. It's like the matrix of scam woo-woo sites. It's like, who is she pranking? Is she pranking Goop? Is she pranking us? Is this all like some elaborate joke and like Kourtney Kardashian is just a hilarious practical jokester with a really dry sense of humor? Or is she just really this lazy? The website even looks eerily similar to Goop with similar categories like blogs and recipes. And if you were to ask, but does Goop come out with overpriced items and over-the-top health cleans like the Goop website does? I'd say you're kidding, right? Of course it does. Because what else would a granola celebrity website sell you than overpriced items with ridiculous health claims? There are some bizarre things found on the Goop, I mean, found on the Poosh website. For example, an article they posted suggested that you should buy an expensive amethyst, amethyst infrared pad. Another article talks about how you can update your bathroom just by purchasing a $1,300 garbage can. A, a garbage, garbage can. can. That website really is a load of garbage. Now I know what they mean when they say, this is trash. You know what they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I'm sorry, I just had to with those puns. Another article on Poosh claims to debunk health myths and yet proceeds to tell you that even if you don't have a gluten allergy, you should eat gluten free, which most experts completely disagree with. They claimed that organic wine won't give you a hangover. And the funniest part of all of it to me that I think just showcases the level of laziness of this website is they even had an article titled Quartz Signature Salad, which is supposedly a recipe to her signature salad that she makes. Except for in this article, the salad that she, that's supposedly her signature salad contains mozzarella in it and Kourtney Kardashian is dairy free. So Courtney can't even eat Courtney's signature salad, like. <laughs> but I just love how they just didn't even like care to make a salad recipe that like fits with her diet and lifestyle. And of course, not absolutely everything on the website is bad, but overall, it seems like she's trying to profit from this young and impressionable audience who wants so badly to live that Kardashian lifestyle and who may believe what the website says and go above and beyond to be able to purchase the overpriced products. So overall, Poosh is a little sus. Then of course, there's the supermodel Kendall Jenner, who at first I assumed just didn't really participate in scams like this because she already had a high paying job as a model, but, but boy, boy was, was I, I wrong. wrong. Kendall Jenner was one of the main influencers under fire for the way that she promoted the fire festival. Under fire for the fire festival. <laughs> Supposedly, Kendall Jenner was paid $250,000 for a single Instagram post about the fire festival. With this post, she didn't really disclose that she was sponsored by Fire Festival and made it sound like she was really excited about going to this festival. Basically, it came across like a really authentic post about this new festival when in reality she was paid $250,000 for that promotion. If you don't know what Fire Festival is, Fire Festival was an overpriced luxury music festival that ended up going up in flames. Not literally, but I had to make another fire pun. Basically, the music festival fell apart. It was an absolute scam and almost put people in danger, the lack of preparation that the music festival had. 
So of course, the people who had poured so much money, like literally, there's some people that poured more than $8,000 into this music festival experience, they were pissed. And a lot of them blamed Kendall Jenner for it because she had promoted it seemingly so authentically and had encouraged a lot of people to go. Of course, it's not her fault that the music festival wasn't what it advertised as, but the way that she went about promoting it was a little shady. Kendall Jenner also did the notorious Pepsi commercial, which was just a fail on every level. I also remembered that time when Kendall Jenner posted on Instagram about how she's finally coming out with this important truth that she's been hiding for so long in this huge announcement and it got people really curious and drummed up a ton of buzz. Because of the way that she talked about it, a lot of people thought that she was going to be coming out on Instagram. So it got a ton of attention. But when she revealed what she was hiding, it was literally just an ad for proactive skincare. Um, when I was 14, I couldn't reach as many people as I can now. Now that I'm 22 and I have this whole thing behind me, I can, I can speak to so many people and just be like, I can help you and it's okay. And, ever, and I experience it, I'm very normal and like, I understand you, like I can connect with you. I'm gonna try and help. I remember last year I was at an award show and I was very excited about it, I'd never been before. I remember getting ready that day, getting my makeup on. I got on the carpet, I felt really good about myself. Then I remember going online and seeing all the horrible things people were saying about me and my skin. But at the same time, I do want it gone. For me, I can honestly say that the magic was proactive. So my camera ran out of batteries when filming, so we are filming a different day. My hair color is a little different. My outfit's definitely different, but we're pushing through. We're making it work. Hopefully the change up isn't too jarring for you guys. So last but not least, Let's talk about Kylie Jenner and one of the biggest and most shocking scams of the Kardashian-Jenner family to come out yet. So this year, Forbes came out and said that Kylie Jenner and Kris Jenner created an elaborate scheme to fool the public and Forbes into thinking that Kylie Jenner was a billionaire when she wasn't. In March of 2019, Forbes declared Kylie Jenner to be a billionaire after selling 51% of her company to Cody, a giant beauty conglomerate, I guess. I'm Kylie Jenner and I am the founder of Kylie Cosmetics. I had an insecurity with my lips when I was younger, so I turned to makeup to help me feel more confident. Starting a company, on my own and it being so big from the beginning there's not a lot of room for mistakes i'm the face to my brand and i take responsibility for everything that happens i haven't learned everything from my mom yet that i know that i need to she teaches me something new every day about everything she's my goals and i'm just each day i'm like trying to take it all in She's definitely been a huge part of the success of Kylie Cosmetics. If I could give some advice, it's do something that you love. 
projects, if you're building something from the ground up, like do something that you're passionate about. So you just have fun every day and you love what you do. The deal was valued at $1.2 billion. No matter what, that's an incredible accomplishment, but things weren't as easy or cut and dry as they seem. When Cody released filings because they're a publicly traded company, the, the truth, truth was, was exposed. exposed. And it was revealed that Kylie's business was actually much smaller and much less profitable than they had led everyone to believe. Kylie Jenner is super rich and her business is wildly successful, but for years she has lied and exaggerated just how successful she really is. In November, Kylie Jenner agreed to sell 51% of Kylie Cosmetics to Cody. That's the beauty giant that owns brands like Clairol, Remmel, and Sally Hansen. And the deal valued Kylie's business at over a billion dollars. But while the deal was great for her wallet, it was maybe not so great for her reputation because in selling to a public company, details about her business have come out. The sale has laid bare one of the Jenner family's biggest secrets, which is Kylie Cosmetics is not nearly as big of a business or as successful of a business as they spent years leading the entire world, including Forbes, to believe. The numbers just don't add up. Kylie Jenner's camp led us to believe that the business had done $360 million in revenue in 2018. In reality, that number was only $125 million. Then there's the skincare line. They told us that the skincare line, which launched in May of 2019, had done 100 million uh, in revenue in just two months. And in reality, it hadn't even done 25 million in six months. As for Kylie's billionaire status, given these findings and the impact that the coronavirus pandemic is having on all beauty businesses, uh, we think that she, her net worth has fallen below a billion dollars. In other words, Kylie Jenner is no longer a billionaire. We just know how shady the Forbes article is on this topic. They are obviously really salty about this entire situation. It starts with Kylie Jenner's web of lies and why she's no longer a billionaire. More than a decade into their fame, the Kardashian Jenners tend to induce eye rolls and sighs among jaded media consumers. But when it comes to their wealth, even critics of reality TV's first family are intrigued. The Kardashian Jenner machine and the cash it generates has been the subject of articles, podcasts, even books. But no one cares more about the topic than the family itself which has spent years fighting Forbes for higher spots on our annual wealth and celebrity earnings list. But I just think the shade in this one part is hilarious. As with other Kardashian ventures, Kylie's business began as a way to cash in on a minor scandal. The youngest of the family, she spent more than a year denying tabloid speculation that she was using lip filler injections before eventually finally fessing up to it in May 2015. Far from being embarrassed about being caught in a lie, she and her shrewd mother, Chris, seized it as a marketing opportunity. The shade. The most bizarre thing about this is the crazy lengths that they went through to keep this lie going and to keep everyone fooled. They invited Forbes into their mansions and CPA offices, and they created tax returns that were likely forged. Sometimes the business world just doesn't make sense to me. Everyone's willing to lie and forge documents just to be a few numbers higher in valuation or to get a few more investors, and it's so bizarre. But in a way, it's really impressive that the Kardashians were able to trick such a well-esteemed publication. They're obviously really upset with her and really pissed, as you can see in the article about the Kardashian lies, but it's kind of funny. Like, you have to give them credit. Like, they, <laughs> they fooled everyone, including Forbes, who prides themselves on being this well-established publication that talks about rich people and their businesses. So it's kind of funny that they were even able to fool Forbes themselves and now Forbes is kind of pushing the blame on them and saying that they like pulled this elaborate scheme and it's like, well, you fell for it. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, obviously it's a scheme, it's a scam. I don't condone it or think it was good, but I do think it's funny that they tricked Forbes. 
my question is though why did they lie like what's the point of lying about all of this was it all for the forbes status to become the richest of the rich to go to such extreme lengths just for a title is really bizarre and mind-blowing to me but i guess i just can't relate to having that level of wealth fame and power it reminds me of the hedonic treadmill which is this theory that no matter how rich famous successful you get humans have a tendency to revert to the same level of happiness no matter what, regardless of where we are in life. Overall, it's clear that the Kardashians will do whatever they can to make a quick buck. And it begs the question, to have this much power, fame, and money, do you have to compromise some of your morals along the way? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And that's all for today's video. I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, have a good one.